1955. The Groom Lake military installation located in the deserts of southern Nevada, and commonly referred to as Area 51, has been the subject of wild conspiracy theories. From supposed alien technology, to time travel machines, Today, however, we explore real Area 51 projects and operations. A couple of facts to get out of the way first. 1. Area 51's correct official CIA designation is Homey Airport, KXTA, and sometimes Groom Lake. There's only a few documents dating back to the Vietnam War that refer to the airbase as Area 51. 2. Before the CIA established the Groom Lake Test Facility, the site was known as the Indian Springs Air Force Auxiliary Field, which was connected to the Creech Air Force Base. 3. Area 51 shares a border with the Yucca Flat region of the Nevada testing site, the location of 739 of the 928 nuclear tests conducted by the United States Department of Energy. 4. In the beginning, Groom Lake was dubbed Paradise Ranch to encourage employees to go work in the middle of nowhere. Later on, it was shortened to just the ranch. 5. Whatever happens at Area 51 stays at Area 51 except the whole Bob Lazar incident. But that's a story for a different day, and it doesn't end the way most people want it to. Number three, Project Aquatone, CIA, US Air Force. The Lockheed U-2 aircraft, nicknamed Dragon Lady, is an ultra-high altitude reconnaissance aircraft that was designed and engineered during the 1950s. How high is ultra high when we're talking about altitude? In the vicinity of 70,000 feet. Just for reference, your average commercial cruising altitude is around 30,000 feet. U-2 pilots have to wear special pressurized spacesuits and usually breathe pure oxygen for at least an hour before takeoff, just so they can deal with the immense atmospheric changes. What does any of this have to do with Area 51? Well, think of it as an origin story. It all began in 1955, when the definitely not up to anything bad, very nice, totally cool people from the Central Intelligence Agency needed a place to test out their brand new toy, the U-2 aircraft. It only took one flight over Groom Lake for the head honchos at CIA and Lockheed to decide that it was the perfect location, mainly because of the smoothness of the land, the natural privacy the surrounding mountains provided, and possibly the fact that it was in the middle of freaking nowhere. One quick phone call to the Atomic Energy Commission and Groom Lake was officially designated. Speaking of the Atomic Energy Commission, do you know when the last nuclear test was carried out in Nevada? Let me know in the comments below. The first Lockheed U-2 was delivered to Area 51 on July 24, 1955. The first flight test was only six days later. It was a bit of an accident. It was only supposed to be a high-speed taxi test, but the aircraft was designed so well that it just took off. Here's a quick rundown of the test flight highlights. Looking at these numbers, it's pretty impressive for a month's worth of work, isn't it? It wasn't all fun and games though. In 1956, one U-2 suffered a flameout. Luckily, the pilot was able to land safely in New Mexico, simultaneously freaking out everybody working that night, since no one had ever seen a Lockheed U-2 outside of Area 51. Unfortunately, other pilots were not so lucky. Speaking of pilots, check this out. The CIA was instructed not to hire military personnel for testing. They even went as far as using non-US citizens. Seven Greeks and one Polish guy were thrown into the project, and I don't think any of them made it past 1955. They didn't die or disappear or anything, they just didn't work out as pilots. At that point, the CIA had come up with a process nicknamed sheep dipping. US Air Force pilots would resign and join the CIA as civilians, with the promise of their previous jobs and ranks back as soon as the testing was done. By 1957, the Lockheed U-2's involvement with Area 51 was minimal. 
but no one thought about shutting down Paradise Ranch. There was much more work to be done here. Number 2. Half Donut, Half Drill, DIA On August 16, 1966, Captain Munir Redfa, an Iraqi Air Force pilot, defected from Iraq and flew his Russian-built MiG-21 Fishbed E to an Israeli airbase. From there, the jet was transferred to an undisclosed location overseas. Yeah, you guessed it, it was Area 51. Both Air Force and Navy pilots evaluated the MiG-21 under what is known today as Project Have Donut. How the hell did they come up with the name, you might ask? Well, it doesn't make much sense, but here it goes. The F-4 Phantom has a donut-shaped sight reticle on its canopy. It's this thing right there. Yep, that one. Anyway, the pilots were able to get some great information from the MiG-21, but were unable to disseminate the results since they were highly classified. Sometime later, the United States Navy Fighter Weapons School, also known as Top Gun, was created. There, pilots could learn about donuts and top secret intelligence. In 1968, a Syrian pilot flying a MiG-17 Fresco accidentally landed in northern Israel, believing he had landed in Lebanon. Israel yet again transferred the plane to the USA, where it was reverse-engineered and tested in Area 51. This project was designated as Have Drill. Both programs used highly trained pilots to simulate dogfights and identify the limitations of the Russian planes. Surprisingly, in the first dogfights, no Navy pilot was able to defeat the MiG-17 immediately, even though the Soviet planes were older and considered outdated. But they did figure out how to beat them eventually. No one in the public sphere knew about these projects until their declassification in 2013. Number 1. Oxcart Program, CIA. In 1959, Project Oxcart became a reality. The project was established for anti radar studies, aerodynamic structural tests, and engineering designs, which pretty much boiled down to the creation of the Lockheed A 12. Yeah, this plane might look familiar to many of you, but it's not the SR 71. If you want to learn about the SR 71, check out my abandoned and declassified Black Projects video linked in the description below and popping up in the top right corner now. Oxcart was such a massive project to undertake at Groom Lake. By late 1960, construction crews were working 24 hours a day to build all the additional runways and buildings. The main runway was now 10,000 feet long, compared to its original 5,000 foot length. At the same time, the FAA expanded the restricted airspace over Groom Lake by some 600 square miles. The first A-12 test aircraft arrived at Area 51 in February of 1962. By 1964, there were nine A-12s at Area 51, operated under the CIA's 1129th Special Activities Squadron. This is around the same time that engineers started experimenting with drones, like the D-21 tag board. Needless to say, I think that technology was way ahead of its time. So what happened? While the Lockheed A-12 did its job of being an ultra-high altitude reconnaissance aircraft, albeit for a very short time, it flew on missions from 1967 to 1968. The A-12, the U-2, the SR-71, and other planes like them were all designed to beat Soviet radar systems. At the end, it might have been a pointless mission, given the fact that the Soviet radar systems became extremely efficient. Plus, there was that whole U-2 crashing over Soviet land situation. That really screwed up the optics of recon aircraft. The planes were also fighting a losing battle against photo recon satellites. Should projects like these be considered a waste of money? Maybe. What do you think? Since the 1960s, Area 51 has continued to expand in size and infamy. Later operations include the testing and engineering of the F-117 stealth aircraft. I'm sure there's plenty more we don't know about Area 51's past. But really, given its popularity, I am inclined to think that Area 51 is nothing more than a distraction, an illusion, a mirage. 
the real revolutionary stuff is probably happening in places like the Dugway Proving Grounds in Utah, where biological and chemical weapons are tested, or Creech Air Force Base. And there's also the Tonopah Test Range, which has seen its fair share of black projects and unidentified, as of yet, flying objects. In other news, the Area 51 raid is supposed to be happening today, right now. Stay safe out there. It's probably best not to Naruto rush a US Air Force base. But that's just like my opinion, man. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.